how Scar really got his scar, his secret backstory. Hello and welcome back Disney fans. Today we are going to discuss how Scar actually got the scar across his eye. We're going to dive deep into Disney's animated classic The Lion King as well as the 2019 live action adaptation. One thing that the live action retelling of this story added that the original lacked was a bit more backstory into our antagonist, Scar. In today's video, we are going to be discussing Scar's secret backstory that was partially revealed to us through the live action movie and fully explained in the Lion King novel. Before we get into today's video, if you are a fan of all things Disney and Pixar, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We upload videos frequently and cover topics ranging from general movie discussions to fan theories and Easter eggs. If that interests you, please like and subscribe, and be sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our magical uploads. All right, let's not waste any more time and dig right in. First, let's break down Scar a bit more in terms of his personality and who he really is as the antagonist of the film. Scar is depicted in the movies as being a very resentful lion. He has excluded himself from the pack and does his best to keep his distance. Scar is particularly resentful of Mufasa and Mufasa's son Simba. The hatred that he holds against Mufasa stems back to their childhood and is clearly more than just an intense sibling rivalry. Meanwhile, his disdain towards Simba comes from the fact that now there is another heir in line for the throne. This hunger for power leads him to do the most dastardly of deeds. He takes the throne by force. Upon actually killing Mufasa by tossing him back into the stampede, he turns his attention to Simba and manipulates him into fleeing the Pride Lands. If you've watched the first movie, you know that Scar is a sneaky, cunning, and vengeful personality. It's pretty clear that he holds a lot of resentment and anger towards his family, thus making him an outcast from the Lion Pride that he is a part of. Unlike the original animated classic, in the live-action remake of The Lion King, we get a bit more insight into the history between Scar and Mufasa. The animated movie told us that Scar and Mufasa didn't get along when we don't see Scar going to Simba's birth celebration. Mufasa is clearly irritated at his brother's failure to appear, but Scar just seems uninterested. In the remake, it's a bit different, a bit more complex. Scar clearly has a deep hatred towards Mufasa. When we first see them together, the two begin to reminisce in an aggressively playful manner. During their conversation, Scar implies that his signature Scar was actually one that he had received from his older brother. He hints that the two had a fight for the right to rule the throne, and it is clear that Scar was not the victor. Scar mentions that in that scenario, it was brute strength that ended up trumping intelligence. Thus, the strong became the ruler of the Pride Lands, and the loser, Scar in his case, was left to sulk in the corner. Later, Scar refers to another time that he lost his older brother. Scar brings up that Sarabi, Mufasa's partner and mother of Simba, ended up choosing to be with Mufasa over him. This doesn't change after Scar disposes of his brother and takes over as leader either. No, though he continues to make advances towards her in attempts to make her his new queen, she continues to refuse him. As far as the movies go, whether it was the live action or the animated classic, that is pretty much all of the backstory that we are given about how Scar received such a serious injury that ended up landing him his name. It barely scratches the surface to be honest, no pun intended. And as it would turn out, this is just the beginning of how it happened and the real truth behind Scar and Mufasa's family history. For those of you who don't know, A Tale of Two Brothers is a novel that was inspired by the animated version of The Lion King, published in 1994 as the first installment of a six-part Lion King series. The novel lets us look a bit deeper into the history of Mufasa and Scar, as well as that of their parents. In the novel, we learn a lot about Scar and his relationship with his family. Not many people know this, but Scar was named Taka by his parents. Not only that, but did you know that in Swahili, Mufasa means king and Taka translates to waste? If that doesn't give away their parents' favorite cub, then the constant praise and favoritism of Mufasa might. As it is told, Mufasa was highly favored and chosen to become the next king, which did not sit well with the young Taka. As we go deeper into the novel, we find out that the young and mistreated Taka became more and more resentful towards his parents and older brother until ultimately he decided to take matters into his own hands. In fact, Rafiki, who was already suspicious of Taka's intentions, decided to follow Taka closely. What he discovered was shocking. Rafiki followed Taka and witnessed him meeting with three hyenas. More specifically, the three that we see in the Lion King films, Banzai, Shenzi, and Ed. The trio of hyenas saw this as an opportunity to convince Taka to make his brother look bad in order to get Taka in the spotlight. 
Taka loved the idea and decided to put his brother into a situation that wouldn't be so easy to get out of. Unfortunately, Rafiki ended up falling and getting knocked out, and by the time he had woken up, Taka was long gone. In a panic, he sent a warning to Taka's father while he attempted to track down the two brothers who were now hunting. When he found them, Taka and Mufasa were getting ready to deal with a Cape Buffalo by the name of Boma, who was standing in water that was up to his stomach, preventing others from sharing the watering hole with them. When Rafiki asked Mufasa what was going on, Mufasa explained that he was trying to calmly convince Boma to share the watering hole. As he began to explain that, until it rains, Boma would have to share his water, Taka jumped in and started a scene. He roared loudly and stated that Boma has no choice in the matter and must share or fight Mufasa. Before any reactions could be made, the furious water buffalo charged at Mufasa, who was then warned to run by Rafiki. The two made a run for it, with Boma hot on their heels. Rafiki even ended up hopping onto Mufasa's back for support. It was then that Mufasa jumped over a nearby ravine, landing on the other side safely with Rafiki still strapped to his back. Boma was still in full charge and ended up plummeting down into the ravine. The water buffalo crashed down hard, but wasn't down for the count. From the bottom of the ravine, he began to yell threats to Mufasa. Boma swore that he was going to get Taka back for his aid in igniting the incident. This statement caught Mufasa's attention, who frantically turned his attention to his brother, who was now surrounded by a herd of water buffalo, who came to Boma's assistance when Mufasa was fleeing. Just as Mufasa was making sense of the situation, a larger member of the herd slashed Taka with his horns. Taka was not only knocked unconscious, but he also had a bad wound across his eye. Mufasa jumped forward and landed himself between the herd of water buffalo and Taka. Just as he readied himself to fight the herd, their father arrived on the scene with a herd of animals at his side that surround the buffaloes and halt the attack. And it is here that Taka got his famous scar and name. It wasn't because Mufasa attacked Taka, no. It was because Mufasa was supposed to receive the attack from the water buffalo, not Taka. Although in the live action film, Scar says that Mufasa gave him that scar, it was really him who tried to trick Mufasa, which is what led to his scar. The saddest part in this story is when we go back to the heartbreaking scene where Mufasa is hanging off a cliff and begging Scar to help him, thinking that Scar would help Mufasa the same way Mufasa helped his brother all of those years ago. And all we see is Scar fulfilling his destiny and flinging him off the cliff to his death, finishing the job that he started all of those years ago. As you can see, there is a lot more lore and information out there that pertains to Disney other than what we see on screen. What do you think about this new information? Do you think Scar's rough backstory justifies his personality and decisions? Be sure to let us know in the comments section. That's all Disney fans. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.